No, I definitely feel that because especially with the climate crisis, I think that countries are turning more authoritarian because they they don't want climate uh, migrants to come in and things like that. So we have to be really careful about how we react. Um, And moving on, I really want to ask you about something that's really special to Mothers of Invention, which is self-care. Because self-care strategies are as important as as strategies um, when of organizing. So I want to ask you, what are the ways in which you are taking care of your mental health and your physical health? And just how do you stay present? Um, taking care of my mental health is a, is a, is a bold assumption that I'm doing that. Um, <laughs> um, I'm trying. Okay. So I'm quite open about the fact that I struggle with depression, OCD, and anxiety, like chronically. Um, so I've been going through like right now, as I'm talking, like I've been going through like a relapse of some of my worst symptoms for the past couple of weeks. And like, I haven't people are like, Oh yeah, good job. You're staying on top of your classes at NYU. I'm really not, I'm really behind on a lot of homework and it's really getting overwhelming, mm-hmm. but, um, mm-hmm. I'm talking to my professors and doing the best I can for me. Um, it's interesting. I have to find a balance between when my escapism no longer becomes healthy. I said before, like my coping strategy is like fiction comic books, books, movies, shows. That's Mm -hmm. why I want to be a storyteller for my life job. That's why I'm in film school. That's why I'm studying. But also sometimes the escapism can become unhealthy when you're completely isolating yourself from everyone. Like I'll go through dark periods where I don't talk. Like people are like, Jamie, like I've been very hard to reach lately because sometimes something as small as like sending a text is exhausting. People are like, oh my God, you have 200 unread texts on your phone. How is that possible? Because sending a text is exhausting sometimes. Yeah, um, I, saw your, and- I saw your post yesterday about yeah. it. And I, I actually kind of felt identified a little bit because I feel like sometimes if you don't check your email one day, it just piles up so much that you don't want to look at it at all. I haven't checked um, my email for a month. <laughs> so I absolutely feel it. <laughs> Um, but, and I think it also goes in waves, right? It's like, sometimes you're really on top of it and sometimes you're not. So yeah. 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 Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'm on top of it. Sometimes I'm not. What I do is like I said, sometimes the escapism, like I said, of movies, shows, comic books, stuff like that. Sometimes it's good, but sometimes I take it too far where I just completely ignore the real world and isolate myself in that just to avoid dealing with anything. What I do is, you know, um, to take care of myself is like I said, uh, I sometimes I, I just call up a friend or I call up a mentor or someone is and really just talk things through. I talk about it. Um, I try to take breaks. I try to, uh, you know, before I was like, oh, self-care, whatever. <clears throat> mm. Oh, I'm realizing my voice is all weird because I haven't eaten today. That's also something my eating patterns get all <laughs> messed up when um, I'm depressed. So I guess it's really about just taking it one step at a time and doing the next right thing. And um and also just kind of reaching out to people, getting a support system and trying to do the best that I can. It's really, God, people ask me, what do you do for self-care? I mean, I used to kind of frown upon it, not frown upon it, but I was like, I don't need that. I'm fine. And then I burnt out like 40 times. So yeah. I was like, oh, this is a thing that is actually valid that I should probably do. So I've been yeah. trying to recently prioritize fun and friendship and relationships in my life, even though that's something I used to not prioritize. Yeah. Um well, what do you do, Chie, with your self-care? Like, how do you how do you take care of yourself? Thanks for asking, because I think that as climate activists, we have to share our strategies. And I definitely feel you on the first point of a lot of the times you don't know you need self-care until you burn out. And that actually did happen to me a while back when I ended up in the hospital with heart palpitations. And uh, up until then, I was feeling like the whole world was on my shoulders, that I needed to do more panels, more speaking engagements, more organizing, um, be the first one to get there, be the last one to leave, make sure everybody knew everything. And through that experience, I realized that that's not the case. You don't need um, to put that much pressure on yourself because there's so many of us climate activists that we are able to tackle the world's issues without having to burn up personally and that's why we need more climate activists so what I do is you know I take one bath a week at least like do the whole face mask thing um uh, just paint my nails make sure that I kind of just take time for myself and the eating habits are not as good now with college because my classes are all over the place but for sure, uh, I'm trying to get that together as well. 
It's a difficult one. I, I totally, totally get that. I mean, it's, I don't know about you. I, you're living with uh, your parents, right? Because it's difficult when my, my parents aren't there to feed you. Because my mom used to, I would be on calls and my mom yeah. would just kind of bring silently fruit. bring fruit. Yes. I don't know if that's a Latina mother thing. or if that's Definitely just a Latina thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because my mom would just silently bring me papaya, like unprompted. And now where's my unprompted papaya? It's nowhere to be found. And the other, like there was the other day where I had my first meal of the day at 8 p.m., which is not good at all. I was just, and then I was like, why do I have a headache and feel bad? Do I have the coronavirus? And then it occurred to me that I hadn't eaten all day. I'm like, hmm, that's probably oh, why. Uh, so that's partially my depression, but also partially just you're scrambling. And then it's like, oh shoot, you haven't eaten. Like I had to remind myself to just drink water right now because I was like, my throat's scratchy. Is it the virus? And then I'm like, no, it's because I haven't even drinking anything today. So sometimes you got to remind yourself because sometimes your mom isn't there to bring you papaya that you didn't ask for, but are very grateful for. Um, and Aww. she, I'm glad that you're okay after the heart palpitations and that you're taking more time for yourself. Cause I saw that post and I was like, Oh my God, she's in the hospital. I was so yeah. worried. So I'm glad you're doing better now. Yeah. It was like all oh, more than se- seven months ago, almost a year ago, I think. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was definitely a learning time for me. Mm. I appreciate you guys being so honest about what you're going through, how you've handled your struggles, and also just being really transparent about how romanticizing and normalizing the grind is not the way that Mm -mm. other, you know, kids that look up to you, like, that's not the way to get into activism, or that's not the way to sustain your activism, you know, you have to- I used to romanticize the grind. Yeah, totally, totally. So I really appreciate you all being transparent about the fact that there is an ebb and flow and that you are finding your own footing in that as well. And as someone who is a little bit older than you, I'm really proud of you both for like accepting help and leaning on your communities because that's the only way that you'll be able to sustain your activism. And I love that because you both are so inspiring to me and it's really exciting to hear what you're up to.